Okay, so if you watched the previous video, you would know that I recently left Dharamsala and went to a town in North India called Manali. So Manali is like this laid back place and it's very natural nearby there and it's near the Himalayas and it seems like a lot of Indian people go there to like hang out in the river and shop, you know, it's like this resort town for India. It also has some amazing ancient Hindu temples like this one called Hadimba, where inside there are like these uh, sacred rocks of the goddess with her footprints. It was very crowded as usual in India. This is another temple I went to where there was like uh, an ancient, another ancient inner sanctum with like sacred deity statues, which I did not film, obviously. And there was also this like really amazing uh, alpine-like forest right in the middle of the city, which I was surprised to find. There's also a sacred hot spring across from the main part of Manali in a place called Vashish. Some intense traffic on small roads like in other parts of India. Also some amazing natural um, scenery and great hiking trails. But for more on that, let's talk to our correspondent in the field, Chris H. Hey everybody, I'm um, currently hiking on this trail, this very pristine uh, mountain trail. I'm literally the only person on this trail. It's totally pristine nature here. It's just amazing that I'm the only one on this trail in the world's most populated country, and it's beautiful up here. But life is strange. The world is a strange place, that's for sure. By the way, have you ever seen uh, people carry heavy objects like this before? This is how they do it in India, and I think also Nepal, but it's definitely not the way it's done in the USA where I guess we'd be using a wheelbarrow or something to carry these bricks. I'm not saying one way is better than the other, just different. Anywho, let's get back to the main topic of this video, which in fact is not my brief and relaxing stay in Manali, but the crazy, epic, and borderline insane minibus journey I took to Leh Ladakh. Anyway, Manali is a nice place and I recommend it. However, my next stop is a little more complicated. I'm going to a place called Leh in Ladakh. So Ladakh is like this semi-autonomous province of India, or perhaps it used to be autonomous. It's supposed to be like a cold desert and uh, it's very Buddhist. I heard it's kind of like a little Tibet, Tibet-like area inside India. And tomorrow I have uh, what's supposed to be a 12-hour mini bus ride there. However, various people have told me that the journey takes uh, much longer than that. I know a guy uh, who just arrived in Ladakh and he left from a city that was like closer than I am now to Ladakh. He said it, it took him 14 hours from there. So I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how this journey will be um, only 12 hours, but we will see. Supposedly it's like in this wild, desolate wilderness, the road just goes endlessly through this wilderness area and there's like no Wi-Fi or anything. It's gonna be an adventure. Okay, and we're off. Here the scenery is all still green because we're just leaving Manali. Okay, and now we're going through a tunnel uh, outside of Manali that uh, I believe makes this journey like way shorter than it was in the past. And here we're taking a short break outside the tunnel. So now the driver is checking something about the wheel. I have no idea what, but everything looks fine. So let's get going. So the scenery on this journey was just amazing. It gets even more rugged and remote later. Um, in the journey here, it's still a little bit green. We're kind of passing through the first range of mountains. Uh-oh, 5 -0. Did we do anything wrong? Uh, I think he was just checking our passports and stuff. So there were some issues along the way, such as this, like flooded roads. But our driver was so good and he was so skillful and he was so aggressive that like he went around this whole column of waiting cars and just drove right through that little flooded area. I was very impressed by his driving skills. So there were a bunch of Buddhist monks from Thailand walking from Manali to Leh, which was incredible because it was so sunny and hot outside and it's so far. So I think what we're seeing here is the camp of the workers who work on the, the highway, the road there. So we had to go through like a number of these high mountain passes, uh, which because of the elevation um, were so snowy, it was all ice and snow all around these high mountain passes like this. There were also like these kind of tense moments of like narrow squeezes around these like slow moving or disabled vehicles. 
and there's like a kind of like cliff right next to the road, so you have to squeeze around. It's a very kind of stressful sometimes. Uh, there, but there are also these, you know, serene moments of uh, just open landscape stuff, which was awesome. This part, I mean, the visual part. Uh, we also had to cross all these like little rickety bridges like this. Um, this was not the first or the last one of these kinds of bridges. We made it here to Sarchu, a little settlement village type thing on the road. Um, as planned. We took a toilet break here. Everything was going smoothly. Everything was on schedule. Because of our driver's aggressive, speedy ways, we were actually going to arrive as planned in Lay that night. So it was like a miracle. It was happening. We were doing the impossible until... Oh, wait. Shit. So do you remember that wheel issue that the, that the driver was checking outside of Manali? seems to have come back and apparently this time it was no easy fix so the axle on the wheel was broken or something and what could we do while we waited for it to be fixed a process that could take hours well we could hop into the back of a flatbed truck and return to that little village we just came from so this is where the real adventure starts people and not necessarily in a good way so we retreated back to this little village of Sarchu to wait things out in this kind of shack-like restaurant sleeping place. Ah! But let's let our correspondent in the field, Chris H, take things from here. Oh, hello, people. Watching Wanderlust. Yeah, so I have to update uh, the situation here. Uh, I was in the middle of a bus ride to Ley from Manali, as you've probably seen. And uh, about halfway through the trip, uh, there was a problem with uh, the bus. The mini bus broke down. There was a problem with one of the bearings. One of the bearings on the bus. And uh, the bus stopped. And they had to call a mechanic. But the mechanic is like... <laughs> in a town that's like three hours away. This is no joke. Because we're literally in the middle of nowhere, in this like uh, wasteland. It's not really a wasteland, it's like a dry mountainous area where not many people live. So basically we, we, we hopped in the back of this uh, flatbed truck to come back to this little settlement area place um, where some people live and we had lunch and we kind of like chilled out and took naps and um, we're still waiting. I think the mechanic has not yet reached the bus. I, have, I don't know if you can hear me because it's very windy. So hopefully the mechanic will reach the bus in the next uh, hour or two and then we can continue on our journey to Lay. And uh, instead of arriving there at the original time of like 7 or 8 p.m., we will most likely arrive at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. That's gonna be a fun night. It's getting colder uh, as the sun sets. That's the situation here. Hope we make it to Lay. Hope we survive. Hope I survive. Also, there's something else going on here called altitude sickness. The elevation here is like, um, it's like at least 3,500 meters, uh, possibly like from the 4,000 range. So uh, some people have like serious headaches and uh, it's another separate problem is the altitude sickness issue. So not, not only did the bus break down and we had to wait like six extra hours to continue on the journey, which we all paid a lot for actually. We all paid 3,000 rupees for this trip at least. Although I have to say the natural environment here is amazing. It's unique, it's beautiful. It's been an awesome, it was an awesome freaking scenic journey until the bus broke down and then we'll get to lay at some point tonight. We won't have to stand spend a night in this little, what would you call it? This little um, two-bit town? <laughs> Can I say that? I'm a little delirious and uh, tired, and maybe I have some slight altitude sickness. Are you guys having fun here? <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just saying this is like uh, unwanted camping. Yeah, unwanted camping. We didn't know that we will stay here yeah, like that. Because the bus uh, had a problem. Yeah. And now we've been waiting here for how long? Maybe for three hours. Yeah. We need more, another two hours yeah. waiting. What time do you think we'll get to lay? Uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. 4 a.m.? Oh yeah, God. Yeah, if the road is like that, then we will we'll reach fast. Even if the road is like that, there won't be any light. Right, so it's going to be no slower. Light in the road. Oh God, that's right. So it'll probably be slower because of that. And colder than this. I'm just hoping that there's no fog in the road. No fog? <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, that would be even worse. Any fog in here? Dead mountain. Right. I think it's pretty dry here. Yeah. So maybe no fog. Where are you guys from again? We're from Bangladesh. 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 And are you feeling cold right now? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, this weather is a lot different than your country, right? Yes, yeah, way much warmer than this. Right. Very much different. Right. The scene inside the shack is pretty grim as the hours pass and still the minibus has not been repaired. Hey, what's up? It's um, 6 a.m. So the situation is that we're waiting for the minibus to get fixed and um, it was supposed to be fixed like last night at midnight or something, but it's 6 a.m. and we all slept here. And so now we're just praying that they'll find a way to fix the minibus and then we can finally continue on our journey. We slept in this kind of metal shack behind me last night. The only benefit to us staying here was that we got to sleep instead of um, the original plan was to leave at like midnight or something and arrive at like 6 a.m. Originally they said 3 a.m. but then it turned into 6 a.m. So we're all just praying that they finally fix the damn bus that we can get out of here. We will see. We will see. So this is the toilet we've been using here. It's pretty basic. Hi, good morning. Hi. Morning. Hi. How are you? I'm very quiet. Good. Are you feeling, <laughs> feeling better? So you had altitude sickness uh, uh, yesterday, right? Yes, it could better when I get medicine from okay. Mr. Christ. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. What's your name again? Uh, Sanya. Sanya. Yeah, Sanya. I'm from Thailand. You're from Thailand. So we're still trying to get to um, Lei. But we have a problem <laughs> during the, the roast. Right. But why we sleep here? Sleep here. Yeah, why did we sleep here? What happened? Ah, because the, the title fixed. They're trying to fix the part. The part, yeah. And uh, the mechanic took a long time to uh, arrive. And they couldn't fix it last night. And they're trying to fix it now, and it's 6 a.m. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be leaving soon. Yeah, Who's that? You. Who's that guy? We leave the... the, the, the here. He's your new friend? Just alone. We got all our friends. They still live here. <laughs> I know. You have, like, special treatment here, because it's just you. I think it's... Uh, special, but I don't want my special like this. <laughs> okay. But okay. good experience. Really? Yes. Okay, if you say so. So it's um, quarter to eight in the morning, and the bus is still not fixed. And people are getting a bit anxious and antsy here. But there is a very cute puppy right here. Oh, look at the puppy. Oh, hi. So um, it's about 8.30 a.m. here, and there's been a new development, a new fortuitous development. Apparently, um, there's a guy who has a, a free, unoccupied minibus down there who's going to lay, which is where we're going. So um, we're talking about uh, negotiating a price to take us there because they're still trying to fix the old bus. It's not fixed yet. They have no idea when it's gonna be fixed. We're still waiting here. So somehow someone found this this open mini bus, which is the same kind of vehicle that we took here and that broke down. So uh, we're talking about how to negotiate the price and uh, if the other bus company will pay anything since their bus broke and left us here. But apparently that's it's not working out too well so far with the payment from the, the original bus company. So. Hopefully we'll be out of here soon. Yes, we're getting on the new bus. Yes. First stop, the old bus. Where some people were very, very unhappy about the total lack of compensation from the first bus company. As the driver, that poor driver, he's still slaving away trying to fix that wheel. After spending the entire night in that freezing cold bus by himself. Um, sorry, what's your name again? RJ. RJ. RJ from Himachal Pradesh, yeah. India. Um, you were just telling me that, so in the winter time, how, how many months of the year is it snow here? Uh, six months uh, snow. And, uh, six months. Yeah. So it's snow here for six months of the year. And closed six months. And the road is closed for six months. Yeah, after that, uh, yeah. opening road. Okay. April. In April. Yeah. And you were saying that they build a new road every year? 
every year. Every year there's a new road. Old road. Yeah, there, you can see pieces of the old road here. <laughs> it's crazy. So that must be a lot of work yeah. to build a new road every year. New road. Good, eh? Good. Yeah, the, the road looks great though. I mean, here in this part, it's great. Okay, let's get those minibuses lined up, transfer that luggage, and get the heck out of here. Okay, we're on the road again. Here we're waiting for the endless military caravan to pass by. One thing I noticed about this driver is that he tended to drive way closer to the edge than the first guy. It was a little bit terrifying at times, but um, he got us there. So these are just some uh, shots of the kind of incredible landscapes that we saw uh, on the second part of the journey. So there's some Tibetan style architecture here and a Buddhist stupa, which is a good sign that we're approaching Leh. And look at this, signs of civilization, tourists. I think we're almost there. Oh my God, we've reached Leh. But the journey's not over yet. We still have to get to the hotel. Fortunately, one of the employees was kind enough to carry my giant suitcase. Oh, oh my God. Finally, a bed. Oh, oh God, good night. Oh. Oh.